Hey guys! Okay, so I'm feeling a little inspired today. And I've been watching a lot of Jenna Marbles, and I think I'm a real fan now. So she has so many. And um, P.S. I'm going to have to get a new webcam because this is not working. I mean, if I, like, move around, it goes all slow on your end. <laughs> okay, so note to self, got to get a new webcam. Today, I wanted to tell you about yesterday. Went to the lake. <laughs> Had a fabulous time. But let me tell you, there were some things about yesterday that I was like, really? This is just not working. Yesterday, got up. Um, my friend has a jet ski. So we're all like, yeah, we're going to go to the lake and we're going to jet ski. Getting the truck ready and stuff like that. And we decided that we didn't want to take the little truck because we weren't even sure that it had the cables that connect, like, the lights. So, of course, we take the other truck. And the other truck's a work truck. It has, like... 500,000 miles on it, you know, still runs, still does its job, so so we're all up really super early, and we've got our gas in our truck, and we're ready to go, and it, here it is, like, 7-something in the morning, and I'm telling everybody, hey, we have to be there between 8 and 9, because otherwise all the jet skis are going to be in there, and we're not going to be able to get in there. Wait, it's Lake Pyramid, by the way, here in California. First of all, we're supposed to be following my friend. But she takes a nosedive off the side of the, the curb at the gas station, jumps into traffic, so she just got to keep going the wrong direction. Lindo can't exactly do that holding a trailer behind him, so we have to go a different direction. They catch up to us on the freeway and everything, so everything ends up good. So the sign on the back of the trailer starts to fall off. So we have to pull over on this freeway where people are going like 90 and 100 miles an hour. Yes, the sign says 65. Do people do that? No, neither do I. We put the sign back on, make sure the lights are still working. So now my friend's in front of us instead of following behind us to make sure nothing falls off. We pull over a second time. Just me and Lean though, because the girls were already gone a thousand miles faster than us. And because it's only 55 miles an hour when you got a trailer bouncing around and jerking your car around back there. And we can't even see them anymore. When we pull over, the truck is making this noise. Like it's about to just like, just give out on life. Like just, <laughs> done. This clicking noise is like really fast and I can't do it. Plus I look retarded doing it. Lean though gets out, looks under the hood. Checks underneath the engine, checks the tires. He hits back in and he's like, we're going to have to go to my boss's house and see if we can borrow his truck. And here I am like, this truck feels like it's about to give out on us and you want to go another 20 miles to your boss's house to change the trailer. So we do it. Um, first of all, we're calling and calling. His boss is not even answering. So we're taking a chance because we're like, dude, we really need a different truck. And if he's not there, we're in trouble. Didn't ever answer his phone get to his house, both his cars are there. So we're like, yeah, score, he's here. We're gonna get to take his car. No one answers the door. No one answers the phones. Nobody answers the door again. So Lindo comes up with this bright idea. He's like, well, I could go into the house and get the keys because you know, his boss and him, they're, they've been together forever. So Lindo can technically do it, but he's never done it because he's never had this issue before. And this is kind of like a fun day and not a work day, so. So we're sitting there contemplating going into his boss's house, taking his keys, replacing them with the keys to the messed up truck, and just taking his boss's car. We end up getting somebody on the phone and they're like, oh, we're asleep upstairs. And we're like, oh, crap, we just woke him up, you know, from a nap make us feel like complete douchebags. Right before we leave, he also tells us, oh, and another thing, don't lock the truck. There's an issue with it. If you lock the truck, you'll never get back in to start the thing to get it to go. We meet the girls at the lake. Of course, now it's like 10 in the morning. Go up to the lady who checks you in, and she's like, oh, you know, we have the maximum amount of jet skis right now. And we're like, crap. And then she asks us, did you have your, your jet ski banded? And we're like, what? Banded? And being a jet skier myself, but never owning one, I didn't know we had to ban them. Banded. So we have to flip around, go all the way 10 miles down the road to get the thing inspected and banded. Banded. Took forever. 
So then we get back up to there. We have to park in this second like lane thing and wait. And now there's four other jet skis in front of us. My friends come over, the girls, and we're like eating and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally, we go up and we're like, you know what? We're just going to get past this. Let's go swim then while we wait for the jet skis to get off the water so we can get in. So we get these wristband things. And then right when we're like to walk away, she was like, oh, where's your truck at? And we're thinking, crap, where'd the truck go? So we turn around, it's still in line. We're the third car, and there's two jet skis on the first one, a jet ski in the middle, and then we have ours. So we're the fourth jet ski. And she's like, well, we're allowing four. It's score. So we go in, and we get on this jet ski. And first of all, can't get the thing to turn on because it's crazy. On My friend who owns the jet ski, I tell her, get on, there's some issue with the jet ski, it's not working. She calls her dad because they just had it done because they haven't ridden it in two years. Hey, Carla, if you're watching this, I will take the jet ski out with you every like day of the summer, every year. She calls her dad and her dad's like, it needs to warm up. So we're like, all right, cool, we'll, we'll drive it around and see if it warms up, you know, because right now we're turning on and we start to go and it goes, dies out, goes, dies out, goes, dies out. So, make a long story short, we spent an hour on the water trying to get this thing to go. Guys are like in canoes and their boats and they're hollering at us like, yeah, go girls. And we're like, this is as fast as we go. <laughs> Sexy, right? Two miles an hour the entire time. We hit a top speed of three miles an hour for a little while. And the jet ski did this weird thing only twice though where it takes off at nine miles an hour and compared to two, that was really fast at the moment, almost threw both of us off twice. And then it died. And then we're like, you know what, this isn't working. We should circle back around, meet the guys at the beach and just have a beach day. So uh, we turn around, jet ski dies. And we're in the middle of this big freaking lake. I'm sorry, but I'm not much of a swimmer. Even though we're wearing life jackets, swimming is hard work. I can deal with going to the gym and doing all that stuff, but swimming is hard, okay? Just hard. So I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna have to get off. I'm gonna have to push this jet ski and just paddle my little heart out. Good thing it turned on because I was not looking forward to it. So at two miles an hour the whole way back to the beach, which is what they call that little area that has sand and rocks and tons of seaweed in it at the lake, we dock it find some like, dudes that are there and they're like jet skiing and flipping and doing tricks and we're like hey we should ask them to go look at our jet skis so we do the guy pulls out these massive amount of seaweeds but i think it's because we went through a marsh when we docked it and everybody's like oh now it's gonna work and i was like okay well let's try it the guy takes it out gets stuck in the middle of the water and comes back doesn't work so we're gonna have to like put it away so that was a bummer Oh, when Carla and I got back, we walked over to where the guys had set up the tent and everything. The thing took off in the wind, dude. Took off. Like, like, flew. Okay? Flipped into the next tent and broke in half. So we're tentless. And on top of that, finds out I know the people in the other tent and they're like, Dude, Amber, what happened? I don't know. I really don't know. So then we all get into the water and we go swimming and stuff like that. You know, Lindo's like, need some beers. We need some beers. So we go get some beers. The five freeway that we take to go get something is closed. So we have to go 10 miles north because there's only one exit. And that exit is 10 miles away from where we're at. So we can turn around and come back to get to where we need to go. Found a liquor store. Lindo and I forgot our wallets in our truck because we're driving Carla's car. So now we have to turn around and go back 10 miles in traffic because they've narrowed that way down to two lanes. The exit that we're supposed to get off to to the lake going down that direction is closed. So we have to go a mile past where we're supposed to turn around, get back on the freeway to exit the freeway to get back to the lake. We had to do this twice. So then we had to go back after we got our wallets and we had to get the beer and then head back and then it was ridiculous, and we had to do this twice, twice. It took us four hours to bust a mission. So we get back, and we're enjoying beers. The rest of the day goes great. Awesome day. 
And right before we leave, we get invaded. All of our stuff gets invaded with these red fire ants. Not the friendly black ones that are just annoying. The fire ants. The red ones that bite and sting and burn. Hence fire ant. We have to fight them all off. And they opened up the freeways when it was time for us to leave, so that saved us a trip and a half going up 10 miles north when we need to go freaking south. So then we get back down to the valley, and everybody's like, dude, that was such a fun day at the lake, even though so much crap happened to us. How about we freaking, like, get some tacos from the taco truck and head to your guys' house and just drink and eat tacos? And we're like, cool, let's do it. It's been a long day. We're all sunburned. Hence the face, dude, I'm burned. We get to the taco stand and we have to park in this parking lot because we've got the trailer behind us with the jet ski. I hear the doors go click. Lindo just locked the door to the truck. So we spent an hour and a half, almost two hours, trying to get the truck to come back on and ended up calling a tow. We towed everything back to our house, which is only a mile down the road. $54 to tow one mile down the road. $54. Dude, that's like a lot of stuff. Dude, no. A mile down the road. Took us like a minute to get here. So $54. So he drops us all off. We hook up the jet ski to... Our other truck ends up working, dude. We could have took our little truck the whole time. The whole time! By the way, dropping it off was a mission and a half, but I don't even want to go there. We took the jet ski back to my friend's house, dropped it off, came home. I'm seriously so tired and just done. Brush my teeth, wash my face. Don't even take a shower, dude. Don't tell anyone because I'm that tired. And just knock out. It was shocked. It was just like a crazy day. Like, how many people have that many bad events happen to you all at once? In one day. That was exhausting. Bad days are exhausting. Okay, I got up this morning. Washed. Obviously. So now I'm nice and clean. Had to do my freaking makeup so I don't look like a zombie when I come on here. Plus my face is burned next Tuesday. And I made myself some coffee. Coffee. And yes, I know that it's not Christmas, but this is the only cup I had available. Makes everything better. Anyways, until next time, guys. Bye!